Hello and welcome. Let's discuss Once Upon a Time and how I'm finding the series so far. Okay, seven episodes is a lot to take in all at once. Let's begin. The pilot episode did exactly what it was supposed to do. It introduced the characters in a way that I understood and it presented the story in a way that I understood. One of my favourite aspects of this show is the fact that we're getting the real world, or should I say the present, progressing step by step in a linear fashion. But when we're going back into the past, into fairy tale land, we're getting that storyline very disjointed and in segmented chunks. I rather like that because it requires a little bit of thought as to where any particular fairy tale storyline is actually actually fits within the timeline and I like a program that makes me think a little bit about it I also loved Regina of the Evil Queen what a brilliant character she is utterly dislikable I mean I thought I didn't like Emma Swan at first in the very first episode I didn't Emma Swan came across as not a particularly likeable character. But then we meet Regina, Henry's adopted mother. And we find out what a dislikable character really, really is. Brilliantly acted and brilliantly scripted. In episode two, the thing you love the most, the one of the striking things I think was the cinematography the actual lighting and the camera work in episode 2 was the thing that I really took from it I mean yes the storyline progressed nicely uh, we didn't find out too much it answered a few questions brought up more questions but it was the the, the way the effects were used both in the forest when the, the curse was originally being enacted and in the fight between the evil queen and Millicent the effects weren't fantastic they were good but I think it, the effects the effect the effects had on the episode as a whole was more to do with the lighting the directing and the the photography than the actual effects themselves in episode three snow falls again we're getting the storyline in the real world in the present in a nice linear fashion not much happening there it's more to do with henry convincing emma that what he's telling her is true and me trying to work out who is who I mean, I think I've worked out that Ruby, the waitress, is Little Red Riding Hood. And we're finding out little, little things about the, the different townsfolk and who they could possibly be. But it's the fairy tale storyline that Snowfalls really is focused on. And that, now we're getting the story of how Prince Charming and Snow White actually meet. And we're also getting... A little bit about the background of why the evil queen hates Snow White so much. In episode 4, The Price of Gold, we get to see Cinderella's story. And both storylines, both the fairy tale and the storybook storylines, both seem to be very standalone in this episode. I mean, as good as they were, we, I think this episode was definitely more to do with the character development of Rumpelstiltskin to see exactly how many pies his fingers were in and why does he need so many children I mean what what is that about because he it, the deals of him taking away people's children seem to be quite prevalent and I think that's what this story was all about it was showing that Emma could leave the town any time she wants but nobody else could for any number of reasons 
but always fate would conspire to bring them back or to not let them leave in the first place and also to show that Rumpelstiltskin is a nasty manipulative person even in the guise of Mr Gold I love Robert Carlyle in this series he's really made this season stand out so far now episode 5 I wasn't able to show you the reaction due to copyright reasons and in it we get Jiminy Cricket's story again another kind of standalone story but we do get to see something that will come up I'm sure much later which is Regina and the caves the mine collapses in that episode we get to see something but we're not actually told what and so far as of episode 7 we have had no mention of that since but that's going to come up later I'm not sure what those shards were someone did tell me in the comments but within the context context of this series I don't actually know what they are <sighs> a constant factor in every episode so far whether it follows the main storyline or hasn't or hasn't as far as I could tell is that Rumpelstiltskin Mr Gold is there making deals with everybody and we see in the shepherd just how far those deals go and how far reaching the consequences are when we see David's backstory or should I say Prince Charming's backstory well we get the whole backstory of the adopted twins one adopted to a shepherd's woman a shepherd the other adopted to the king and we see one of them die we see the whole dragon sequence which was absolutely awesome I've got to say the effects were again very much the same as when they were done in the thing you love the most the effects were more to do with the cinematography and the directing than the effects themselves which were good all I mean is that they're hardly groundbreaking and then we come to the last episode that I'm going to deal with today which is the heart is a lonely hunter in which Graham in the real world the sheriff starts to remember his past life after contact with Emma and this is where I'm starting to get really interested because he told even though he died at the end of the episode or seemed to die at the end of the episode having not watched the next one yet I don't know if he's actually dead but he seemed to be dying or de died at the end of that episode but he told Emma and he told Henry and he told Mary Margaret that he'd had these thoughts and these memories and that must be enough for now for Emma and Mary Margaret to uh, maybe not totally believe Henry but at least treat Henry's words with a degree of respect a degree of truth so that's going to open up that storyline um, and of course we've still got the storyline of the evil queen and now we found out that they were stepmother stepdaughter and that Snow White somehow betrayed a secret or a confidence of the evil queens and that's why she hates her so much but we still haven't found out exactly what that is so we still need to go back even further to find that out and I'm hoping this is what's going to happen in this episode coming up very shortly thank you for watching this little update I just wanted to get my feelings out there known that I am enjoying this series I can't always convey that in the comments and that's the the terrible thing about comments is you can never really truly express how you're feeling about a series and I am really really enjoying this I don't know which 
storyline I'm enjoying more. I mean, some episodes I really enjoy the fairy tale side of things, and I don't really care about the the real world story. And in other episodes, it's the other way around. And in some episodes, it's both that I care about. So it's it's full of surprises. It's just what I like in a series. It pulls the rug out from what I think is happening. It has the ability to fool me, confuse me, and sometimes make me feel a bit smug because I have worked it out. Because a good series has to do that occasionally. It has to make its viewers feel a little bit good about themselves. And I'm hoping that I can meet some more of the townsfolk so I can start to guess some more of the uh, more of the fairy tale personalities behind them. Until later on today, when you will receive my reaction to episode 8, hopefully, or at least a post-reaction for it. Until then, I'll see you later.